Hi, and welcome to another video. You Muslims tell us Christians the Bible is textually corrupt and therefore not authoritative. But even from an Islamic point of view, is your claim correct? Well, you primarily quote Quran chapter 2 verse 79 when making that claim because you know this is the only verse in the entire Quran that seems to suggest the Bible is physically and textually corrupt. So, let's take a closer look at that before I make five points to refute your claim. Quran chapter 2 verses 78 to 79 says, وَمِنْهُمْ أُمِّيُّونَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ الْكِتَابَ إِلَّا أَمَانِيَ وَإِنْهُمْ إِلَّا يَظُنُّونَ And there are among them, meaning the Jews, unlettered people who know not the book, meaning the scripture, but they trust upon false desires and they but guess. فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ ثُمَّ يَقُولُونَ هَذَا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ لِيَشْتَرُوا بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا Then woe to those who write the book with their own hands and then say, This is from Allah, to purchase with it a little price. فَوَيْلٌ لَهُمْ مِمَّا كَتَبَتْ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَوَيْلٌ لَهُمْ مِمَّا يَكْسِبُونَ Woe to them for what their hands have written, and woe to them for that they earned thereby. The first point we notice here is the statement, And there are among them, meaning the Jews, unlettered people who know not the book, meaning the scripture. If you think about it, the Qur'an here is actually claiming the availability and knowledge of the original contents of the biblical scriptures. Obviously, you cannot be ignorant about a scripture which has no existence. And we know it certainly did exist in Muhammad's time because today we have very early Bible manuscripts that predate Muhammad. So the Qur'an is saying the biblical scriptures not only existed in Muhammad's time, it also claims they were available to the Jews of Arabia because of these same words, and there are among them, meaning the Jews, unlettered people who know not the book, meaning the scripture, which implies, with the exception of these unlettered Jews, the other Jews did know the scripture because it was available to them. The words, and there are among them, differentiate the Jews who did not know the scripture from the Jews who did know the scripture and had it in their possession. The second point we notice here is, these verses are only referring to a group among the Jews in Arabia during the time of Muhammad who were guilty of that action. This is clear again from the same words, and there are among them, meaning the Jews. This means the Qur'an is not talking about all the Jews with their scripture everywhere else in the world. In fact, Ibn Kathir in his commentary on this verse mentions them as a category of people among the Jews. The third point we notice here is, this particular group among the Jews are known in the Qur'an as Ummiyun, who wrote a book and claimed it was from God. According to Edward Lane's Arabic-English lexicon on page 92, in Arabic, Ummiyun has various meanings, such as illiterate people, unlettered people, or Gentiles. A Gentile is someone who is not Jewish or not an Israelite. Contextually, the Qur'an is here referring to Gentile Arab converts to Judaism who were ignorant of the inspired Hebrew scriptures and decided to write a book which they claimed was revelation from God in order to profit from it. For proof this only refers to Gentile Arab converts to Judaism, we turn to Ibn Ishaq's biography, The Life of Muhammad, where he speaks about Quran chapter 2 verses 77 to 78 on page 252 saying, God said, do they not know that God knows what they conceal and what they proclaim? And some of them are Gentiles, who do not know the book, but merely recite passages. They only think they know, i.e. they don't know the book, and they do not know what is in it. Yet they oppose thy prophethood on mere opinion. So Ibn Ishaq is saying, Ummiyun in this context refers to Arab, Gentile converts to Judaism. Also, Alfred Guillaume, the Arabist scholar of Islam and translator of this biography, has an interesting footnote at the bottom of this page, where he points out that Muhammad himself is called the Gentile prophet, or an nabi al-Ummi, in Qur'an chapter 7 verse 157. He also mentions that early traditionists identified the Ummiyun as Arab proselytes, or converts, who did not know the scriptures. And for you Muslims who claim that an nabi al-Ummi really means the unlettered prophet and not the Gentile prophet, I turn your attention to the following 
following Qur'an translations which agree with me that it means the Gentile prophet. Gentile in this case means an Arab non-Israelite. And if you ask me about the identity of these Arab converts to Judaism, I will direct you to read pages 246 to 248 of Ibn Ishaq's biography, The Life of Muhammad, where we see indications that people from the Arab tribes of Aus and Khazraj had converted to Judaism. In fact, Shia Muslim sources also identify the Aus tribe as Jews. So now that we know who the Ummiyun are, ask yourself, how could these Arab converts to Judaism change the text of the sacred Hebrew scriptures when the Quran itself says they had no knowledge of those scriptures in the first place. Obviously, they couldn't corrupt any part of the Bible without prior knowledge of its text. The fourth point we notice here is that if the Quran is actually claiming corruption of the Hebrew scriptures, then we are forced to conclude that the author of the Quran is not God because he was ignorant of the fact that prior to and during the 7th century, accurate translations of the Hebrew scriptures, such as the Codex Vaticanus, were also possessed by Christians elsewhere in the world. He seems totally unaware that Christians also believe in and possess the Old Testament scriptures. In addition, the author of the Quran was completely unaware that in the future, the Dead Sea Scrolls would be discovered, which include biblical manuscripts in the original Hebrew, which predate Muhammad by many hundreds of years. So, corruption of the Hebrew scriptures possessed by a group of Jews in Arabia certainly does not mean corruption of the same Hebrew scriptures possessed by Jews and Christians elsewhere. So, what should you Muslims conclude about Quran chapter 2 verses 78 to 79? What is your Quran actually saying or not saying about the Hebrew biblical scriptures? Are they corrupted or not? Well, this leads me to my fifth and final point. Here's the answer from your Prophet Muhammad himself. In Sunan Abu Dawood, Volume 5, Hadith number 4449, we read the part where Muhammad says, I'tuni bit-Tawrat, bring me the Torah. Muhammad then faces the Torah and claims, Amentu biki wa bimen anzalek. I believe in you and in the one who revealed you. And this hadith is graded Hassan or reliable. So Muhammad in the 7th century affirmed his belief in the Torah. This means if a Muslim relies upon the statement of any companion of Muhammad who held the opinion that the biblical scriptures are corrupt, this companion of Muhammad would be contradicting Muhammad himself. Case closed. So, dear Muslims, in closing, you can see Quran chapter 2 verses 78 to 79 does not say the Bible is corrupted. Once the passage is read in its proper context, we discover that it is not speaking of Jews corrupting their holy book, but simply claims that some ignorant Gentiles from the Arab tribes of Aus and Khazraj had converted to Judaism and wrote some other document and claimed that false kitab or that false scripture was from God in order to gain some financial benefit. So I hope that clarifies the issue for you. Thanks for watching, and God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.